Just like pub subs, flip flops, and afternoon thunderstorms, <laughs> golf carts are becoming a much more common sight in many of Central Florida's residential neighborhoods. But they're not all the same, and the rules of the road are kind of a moving target. West 2's Scott Heiler has a deeper look at the booming golf cart culture. You see them in golf communities, you see them beachside, you see them in rural areas, and you see them in the suburbs. The fact that it's easy to do things with the family. You know, you can take him to school, you can pick him up from school, you can go around here. And there's absolutely no doubt that you are seeing more of them. Golf carts of all sizes, styles. They really go for the looks. You know, the gentleman that was just here, he's in, he wants the mean look, you know, lifted and you know, all blacked out, uh, you know, bigger tires, all terrain. And price. This one here is going to be right around about 15000 Adam Rosenberger has been in the golf cart business for 12 years. He's never seen anything like this. The need for people to get outside during the peak of the pandemic gave a boost to the already growing business. So with the skyrocketing interest in carts, Adam can barely keep enough in stock. But that also means there are a lot more on the roads and a lot of new drivers out there. With the law of averages, that also means there are bound to be more accidents. A Central Florida lawyer who handles golf cart injury cases says that the most recent U.S. Consumer Product Safety Study found that there were 18,000 accidents a year. And a shockingly high number of them involved people under the age, I think it was something like 40% involved people under the age of 16. And most of those accidents were people being ejected or falling out of or off the golf cart. In May, near Lake Washington in Brevard County, a father and son were thrown from the family's golf cart when a truck rear-ended them at night. Both sustained head injuries. Common causes seem to be number one, people didn't see the uh, the person driving the golf cart. They're a smaller vehicle. Uh, they're not expecting them. You're, you're really not expecting a golf cart to come uh, off of a side street or a road or so forth. So visibility is a big issue. But where you can drive the carts and even how they're outfitted depends on how the cart is classified and the community you'll drive it in. It's not just the people driving these carts, but the community, kind of like they're aware. There are three types. Your classic golf cart, it has no lights and only goes a maximum of 15 miles per hour. Anyone older than 14 can drive them. Then there's a personal transportation vehicle that can go maximum 19 miles an hour. And at the top, a low speed vehicle maxing out at 25 miles per hour. But that version needs to have a windshield, seatbelts, lights, even a license plate, insurance, and you have to be a licensed driver. We just recommend going and checking with your local law enforcement uh, office to find out what is legal and what is not. But in some communities where carts are very popular, like the villages. Just about every law that the villages can pass to make these vehicles uh, more accessible, they've done because a large portion of their population uses them. And they don't just use them to play golf. So while they might be called golf carts, they are used for much more than driving on fairways and course paths. The best advice, know the rules of the roads in your community. Assume that the cars around you don't see you. And if you do take the leap, embrace the growing community within Florida's golf cart culture. Yeah, it is easy to get around places. It, you know, don't have to fight traffic so much. And it's just a nice laid back community. In Brevard County, Scott Heidler, West 2 News. Yeah, nice.